Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it's great to be here. So I am Katri. I run a research group at the Cognitive Brain Research Unit at the University of Helsinki. And we are trying to understand uh, the neural mechanisms that underlie empathy and good, fruitful interaction between people. And we're especially interested in how we could make these things work when people go online. Because uh, as said, empathy is something that seems to be missing when we interact in digital environments. But um, in short, I am a scientist. Um, but dear members of the audience, so are you. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> well, I know it might sound confusing, and it's uh, you know, really early in the morning and everything, and I, I thought creative people sleep late. <laughs> I had to be here at 8 a.m. <laughs> but um, um, if everything goes according to plan, after my talk, uh, you will all agree with me that you are scientists. And in fact, you'll not only agree that all the people in this room are scientists, but that in fact all the people inhabiting this planet are scientists too. Um, but let's take a step back and think about the topic for this morning. It's called mystery. And perhaps off the top of your hat you might think that uh, the experience of mystery and science are pretty far removed from each other. They might even be complete opposites. That as we approach the mysteries of the world, as we demystify them with the scientific method, they become these boring facts about how things work, often contradictory, often hidden in piles of papers and behind paywalls. Um, that's the second uh, aim for my talk today, is to convince you that as we approach the mysteries of the world through the scientific method, we don't lose any mystery. We gain understanding and we gain new viewpoints on the world. We gain new worlds of wonder that never existed before. So that's the second aim for my, for my talk today. I wished that um, nobody would see science and the scientific method as a threat to the experience of mystery but as something that increases our opportunities for awe and wonder towards the world. Okay, let's get started. <laughs> Two very difficult tasks and a very critical audience. <laughs> um, what is mystery? I have a, um, a solution in mind, I have a, a definition in mind, and it is this. I propose that to this morning we'd think that mysteries are meaningful questions that humans come up with, meaningful questions that we need answers to. Um, and the thing with questions is that they evoke curiosity. And humans happen to be a very curious species of animal. Uh, from birth we aim towards discovery of the world. From birth we are curious towards the world, we want to interact with it. And as we interact with the world, throughout our lives we encounter countless amounts of mystery. We see things we thought could never, uh, could never happen, we couldn't even imagine. We have experiences that are inexplicable based on our current understanding. Um, the story of human beings on Earth, the history of human beings on Earth, is a history of mystery. <laughs> that rhymed. At some point uh, during human history was a mystery. What is that big shiny thing in the sky? What is it? Is it God? <laughs> What's the meaning of it? Why does it appear every day? Um, at some point it was a mystery where human beings have come from. Who put us on this planet? And at some point it was a mystery what Earth is? What does it look like? Uh, but now we know. So we've approached these great mysteries about our own existence with the help of the scientific method. And we have created new understanding, we have received some answers, we have created some facts about how the world works, but at the same time we've opened up new arenas for discovery. We've created new ways of looking at the world that never existed before. We've uh, created more mystery, more, more possibilities to be in awe and wonder 
about how the world works, new ways to see things we thought we already understood. And the important point here is that science belongs to everyone. Science belongs to humanity as a whole. Um, science and research are just not things that researchers do for a living. Um, the scientific method is not something that is employed only within universities. It belongs to everyone. And, but most importantly, science is not a belief system. Science does not produce viewpoints on the world that can be countered with alternative facts taken to be equally true. That is not how it works. The scientific method is a way to create reliable information about our shared reality. I know we all have a subjective experience of the world, but science is a way to find what is common. Science is a way to share this experience. And based on this understanding we, that we create of the world, we can create solutions that actually work in it. Without scientific understanding of the world, we create solutions that are just humbug. <laughs> And science is founded, the, the method is founded on thinking tools that every single person in this room would use when trying to understand how the world works. Let's take an example. Let me pick on someone in the front row. <laughs> Let's say that you, um, you are um, slightly poorly educated. <laughs> you probably went through school during Trump's government or something. <laughs> And you've missed out on some, some facts about the world that other people seem to know. So let's, let's imagine that you have only just now realized that there is a big shiny thing in the sky. Just today you noticed something big and fiery come up in the east and travel across the sky for hours before it set in the west. And my god, this is the first time you've ever seen it in this world. Congratulations. You've just made an observation. <laughs> it's an observation about the world, and you're filled with awe and wonder. You are, you're faced with mystery, and you're filled with questions. You ask yourself, what is that? <laughs> um, why is it there? And will it be there tomorrow, too? And um, you might already have formed a hypothesis based on your experience, based on your observations and your previous, uh, the previous information you have, you form a hypothesis that I propose that the big, fiery, shiny thing will be there tomorrow, too. What do you do next? I wait. You wait for tomorrow yes. to do a test. <laughs> you test the hypothesis that the big, shiny thing will be there tomorrow, too, by repeating your measurement. So. In short, tomorrow you look up and go, yeah, there it still is. <laughs> Sorry? Can I make a conclusion? Um, you might make a conclusion at that point. You might go like, okay, it was there yesterday, it's here today, it's probably there tomorrow too. So you have reached some sort of understanding about the thing in the sky you just discovered. But you are a curious human being. And more questions ensue. You gain some understanding, it opens up a whole new world of mystery for you. Because you start to think, um, are other people seeing it too? <laughs> Am I the only one who sees the big shiny thing in the sky? Uh, is there another explanation for my observation, for my conclusions? Is there something wrong with my eyes? Do I have a brain tumor that makes me see bright shiny objects? Might be true. Uh, you might start considering bigger questions like, why is it there? Um, what if it weren't there? What, is it important? Is it moving? Or are we moving? <laughs> and you continue with this, you're curious, you ask questions, and ultimately you become a scientist. And that's what we all do. That's how our brains are rigged. We're all scientists. Um, so in short, Science is how we approach the unknown. Science is humans embracing mystery, going towards what we don't know, admiring it, and creating more mystery. And since this is Creative Mornings, 
I propose that science is also highly creative. <laughs> it's not about stating the obvious, it's about making things come to life that a couple years ago were just figments of your imagination. It's about helping things take form that were previously only ideas, like the tractor beam. Isn't it fantastic? <laughs> okay, okay, it works just on a cellular level, but they've actually created a tractor beam. And there was uh, talk about this um, like warp drive becoming reality as well. Insane. And in my mind, this kind of system of approaching mystery with sci the scientific method, creating more mystery with the scientific method, and helping mysterious uh, things take form, with the scientific method is what takes humanity forward. This is what I strongly believe. Because as we gain understanding about how the world works, we can create things that uh, actually work in the real world. Things that help us do better, such as uh, cancer medication or vaccines or cancer vaccines or this thing, whatever this is that, you know, eliminated leukemia from, from uh, infants. Um, it gives rise to things like computers and clean energy and democracy. It's what takes humanity forward. And in my mind, humanity and humanness stop when we give up on science, when we give up on scientific thinking, on the method when we give up on trying to understand and discover, and when we start to fear the mysterious or the unknown. So in short, um, I believe we need more scientific thinking in the world. And when I say this, I don't mean just the facts. I don't mean the end results of research. You read about them all the time in the paper, like the headlines I just showed. And uh, the end results of research are often contradictory. That leaves you in a confused state, so this causes cancer, but that doesn't, and now this does again. And, and then you start thinking, well, maybe alternative facts are as true as, as what comes out of scientific research. I think the most important thing with, with science is the method itself. <laughs> it's what I've been speaking to you today about. So I haven't speaking about the, the end results of my research, or what we're going to do. If it's meaningful, you'll find out. Today is all about the method and how we approach the mysteries, how we create more understanding about how the world works. And that is what we need more of. We need more of it at work. So I wager that all the people in this room consider themselves to operate in a knowledge intensive and creative business, right? You try to create new knowledge, new experiences, uh, new types of interaction. You know, the end results of your work are creative. So wouldn't it make sense to make use of the thinking tools that humankind has developed throughout its existence designed for exactly this purpose of creating new things, creating new understanding and learning? I propose that the scientific method is needed more than ever in, in society. I think that scientific thinking is attainable for any citizen of the world. Everyone can think scientifically. It would equip uh, individuals with uh, the ability to create reliable information about how the world works. Scientific thinking would equip citizens with the ability to build a clearer, more accurate picture of what is actually true. And based on this understanding, we would be able to make informed decisions. <laughs> We'd understand the repercussions of our actions. We'd understand how the decisions we make influence other people, all the people in the world. And finally, I propose that we need scientific thinking as humanity more than ever, since we seem to be faced with problems of tremendous magnitude um, that threaten our very existence scientific method offer, offer, offers um, a very powerful problem-solving tool. <laughs> and it seems kind of urgent that we start employing it so that there will be a world with mysteries left and people left on this world to experience the awe and wonder of those mysteries. 
So, my dear fellow scientists, do they agree? <laughs> Please continue in your endeavor to understand the world. Please continue. Please approach the mysteries uh, you encounter with this fantastic tool called the scientific method that probably itself originated from the greatest of all mysteries, the questions of who are we, what are we, <laughs> where are we, and uh, what is the meaning of this existence. Thank you. Thank you for your time this morning. <laughs>